What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Booth Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Thirsty Thursday. This one's almost over, and it's about to be finally freaking Friday, and I think we're going to be getting some snow tomorrow night and things, and um, just catching you up on a couple of things. Um, Micah Parsons at the airport today being stalked a little bit by fans that wanted to get his autograph. He kind of tweeted about it. And what I'll say maybe is not a good look. Um, you know, the fans are there with jerseys and many helmets and they want to get your autograph. I get it. You, you don't feel like being bothered all the time. But that fan there that had your jersey, that's one of the jerseys, one of the many jerseys that were sold to make you the number one jersey seller. I want you to think about that for a second because that person right there, you have the opportunity to make him a fan for life. For life. And um, I don't think you should look at that as a bad thing or that you're being bothered. This is the monster that you create when you are a podcaster. Oh, that also plays football. So be that as it may, we're dealing with the Dallas Cowboys because it is time to go to work. The Cowboys better be going to work. As my, my, my buddy, Game Time Brian, says, I don't want to see Catboy at the Combine with a stopwatch. I want him back at his office doing some work. Now, now Brian, I'm going to have to dispute that just a little bit with you because here's what actually happens. When you have the Super Bowl, there's a lot of work that gets done at Super Bowl because you have all the owners and the GMs and the coaches. They're all there, and they kind of talk a little bit. Same thing with the combine. You have all the GMs there. You have the front office people. You have the owners. And they know that the league year is starting in a couple of weeks. In fact, we'll be in franchise tagging time during that time when we start doing OTAs. And so this is a chance for teams to kind of say, you know, um, I got a guy that I may want to move on. You, you got any interest in it? Or you might say, hey, you, you, you thinking about moving on from this guy? You know, that guy right there. He might fit your roster better, man. Let me take that other guy off your hands. And this is where some of that work starts to happen. You may remember last year the Cowboys gave permission around this time for Zeke Elliott to, you know, to seek a trade, you know, find some offers and stuff. So that way they could figure out what this market and stuff was. I believe it was Zeke. Was it Zeke? To, to look out, yeah, to look out for a trade and things. So this is where you start to see some of that work going. Now, we do have a bit of a problem. A problem that I'll say is huge, but not as huge as you think. Because as we sit here right now, we're not in the top five. We're not in the top 10. We're not in the top 15. We're not in the top 20. We're not even in the top 25. We are sitting at 27th in cap space and by cap space i'm meaning we're under we're in the red okay you know when they say you're in the red as opposed to being the black you want to be in the black of always always bet on black black means you have positive money red is negative on the spreadsheets and so right now as we look at it the first team that's below is the packers at 2.8 followed by the 40 whiners that are at minus 3.7, and then the sea chickens at minus 5,230,000, uh, 5, million, 5, the Steelers at minus 13.8, followed by the doo-doo browns that are at 19.7 under, and then there's us who's slightly below the Cleveland Browns at 19,000. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Numbers are boring me. 19.7 million under. Now, there are some teams that are in worse shape. Uh, the, the Broncos at 24 minus. The Chargers at minus 45. The Bills at minus 51. The Dolphins at minus 51. And the Saints at 83. And so, before you go running off into the woods panicking, the Saints are always about 70 million behind every year. 
but it hasn't precluded them from making moves and things like that. It's all accounting numbers and how you can work the system. Let, let me show you exactly how bad the numbers look. So I, hopefully you guys can see this. If you're on your desktop, you probably can. If you're not, then probably you won't see it. But here's where it is. Or actually, here, I'll, I'll do it this way. Okay, how about this? Here's where we are down there. You see in the gray, minus 19 million, uh, 19.7 million dollars. Now, here's where our salary cap actually is right here. And you can see when you look at the numbers, I know what stands out because it goes in the order of where the numbers are. Dak Prescott is 59 million. Zach Martin is 28. Demarcus Lawrence is at 20. CeeDee Lamb is at 17.9, Diggs is at 15, Michael Gallup is 13.8, Terrence Steele at 11, Brandon Cooks at 10, uh, Donovan Wilson at 7, Tyron Smith at 6. So this is where the Cowboys have some work to do. The elephant in the room is Dak Prescott. His $59 million, guys, okay? $59 million. They could do three things. Three things. One, do nothing and bite the bullet of $59 million and say this is Dak Prescott's last year, in which case you get nothing for him when the year's up. And you go through and you restructure, say, Zach Martin, D-Law, um, CD, you get a new contract for it, you'll save some there. Uh, redo, Diggs, and Michael Gallup, you, you probably make a June 1st cut. Um, Terrence Steele, you can get a few dollars out of, uh, Brandon Cooks, you probably could, Donovan Wilson, you could get a little bit out of and so on. So you go through, you can nickel and dime and get yourself under the salary cap, but you're going to have to sign your rookies. You've got 16 free agents that are going to have to be either brought back or replaced, which means those 16 players are going to count against that cap. And if you're going all in, you're pushing the chips all in. There's no money to push in unless you do Dak Prescott. So doing nothing is not an option. If you want to get some relief for this year and not commit to further going any further, you could restructure and throw some of that money into the voidable years. You could do that. And you could probably get about 20, 21 million. That's okay. That's not bad. You could... I believe make Dak. Let me see if it's on here. Um, restructure if that's in there. Okay, that would be the restructure. So you would save twenty one million, uh, twenty one point eight million. I didn't realize they had that on here. Um, you could save on Zach Martin twelve. You could save four on D loss. So this breaks it down for you exactly what you can do with the players to save some money. That's all positive money that you can get. Let's see if it has no. It doesn't have a total down there. Um, that's positive money that you could get on there. But 21 basically gets you back to even with $2 million to spare. If you go ahead and get a deal redone, a new deal, an extension, you got this year you can hide some of that money in, you could get around $40 million this year, and then you could do the nickel and dimes, and you have some more room to try to make some moves. Now, I've got some people that have said, you know, I, I'm, I'm on, uh, you know, um, one of my friends said, you know, I'm on the team, don't pay Dak because they don't do anything with the money. Well, that may be true. That may be true that they don't do anything with the money. But if they don't restructure them, I can guarantee you definitely they can't do anything with Dak Prescott because there will be no money to do anything. So... Dak is kind of in the driver's seat here where um, the Cowboys can't franchise tag him. They can cut him, but they're still going to pay $59 million, be it over one year or two years. You can extend, you know, restructure him, but you're still going to pay 59 And at the end of next season, he's going to go elsewhere. And quite frankly, for Dak Prescott, not getting a new contract, it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world for him because at that point, you can look around and see what team is looking for a veteran quarterback that's trying to make a run and go all the way in. 
kind of like the Rams did with Matthew Stafford. And you can pick that team that you look that's loaded and, and find out, are you going to be loaded for Bear? Are you going to be trying to get this one? And if they are, you take that team and see if you can ride them all the way to a Super Bowl. And then you've got the ring to go with the man of the year and the uh, offensive play, a rookie offensive player of the year, um, as well as most of the Cowboys' records. And you're set for life. For the Cowboys, well, that's starting all over. And I'm going to say something because, you know, I, I've got, we've got the, the tra- team Trey Lance that's out there. But I want you to think about this one for a second here. Because in that 2021 draft, let's think about the quarterbacks that were taken. That was the first draft that the first three picks were quarterbacks. Everybody knew that that was a quarterback-heavy draft. And so Trevor Lawrence was number one. Zach Wilson was number two. Trey Lance was number three. And as we sit right now with that draft class, I think there's one playoff appearance two games, and one victory. And that's by Trevor Lawrence. And I'll say Trevor Lawrence, his team was in the driver's seat to actually get the number one seed in the AFC and didn't make the playoffs. And Trevor Lawrence had, I want to say, 21 turnovers this year. So thinking that it's a home run guarantee by just drafting a quarterback, if you can get up there to get one of those guys, it's a long way to go. And I want you to think about what San Francisco gave up for Trey Lance. I believe it was three number ones and a a second and a third or something like that. It was a lot. So hopefully Catboy is getting to work. He's getting CD's deal done. He's getting Dak Prescott's deal done. And he's getting some cash to make some moves in free agency so we can literally go all in. All right, good people. I hope you guys are having a great evening. We're going to keep doing what we do and keep you up to speed with all the news that is the Dallas Cowboys. Peace out.